Here's an example. An important issue facing Americans is a large number of medical malpractice lawsuits and the expenses that they generate. In a study of 1,228 randomly selected law medical malpractice lawsuits, it is found that 856 of them were later dropped or dismissed. This is based on data from the Physicians Insurance Association of America. Construct a 99% confidence interval estimate of the proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. So looking at this problem, I get the idea that it's doing some kind of inference where we either are going to do a hypothesis test or a confidence interval. The reason I get that is because it talks about having a sample and it talks about us doing something. Um, to figure out if we're doing a hypothesis test or a confidence interval, I look for important words. In this case, the word is right here of confidence interval, but you can also look for the word estimate. So estimating, estimate are all words that tell you that's a confidence interval. Then I have to determine, is it a confidence interval for proportion, mean, some other parameter that we can deal with? And so I look for words, and in this case I see the word proportion, so that tells me that we are dealing with proportions. And then I notice that we had one group of people, this 1,228 randomly grouped of lawsuits, in this case not people, but lawsuits, and so we only had one group, so that tells me we're one sample. So this is actually a one sample proportion interval. All right, so now that we know that, we can then follow the steps of a confidence interval. Um, the first thing of every test, whether it's a hypothesis test or a confidence interval, is to state the random variable and the population parameter, in words, in this case it's proportion. Um, we do know that the parameter is proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. That's the last statement here. So I can type this here. I type this up because it takes a long time to write all this. And the symbol for proportion is little p. Um, proportions are made by taking a count over a total, so we must have counted something. So my random variable is actually the number of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. All right. Um, this is not a hypothesis. This is a confidence interval. So your second step is actually to state and check the assumptions. There are no hypotheses to state in this one. So we have a... Um, in a confidence interval for proportions, we have that we have a random sample, we have that we have the properties of a binomial experiment, and we have that we can approximate the sample portion with a normal distribution. So we want to state those three assumptions and try to state them in terms of the problem if you can. So the first one would be that a random sample of lawsuit status, because what we actually did was take each lawsuit and determine if it was dropped or not dropped, so we put them into a status category, um, and then we counted from that status category. So we actually measured the status of each lawsuit of the 1,228 medical malpractice lawsuits was taken. If I come up here, I notice that the problem actually says that we were randomly selected. So we're good. We don't have to worry about that. So we can actually just state now that the problem states that they were randomly selected. So the assumption of a simple random sample is, in fact, met. Um, the next one's hard to write in terms of the problem, so I usually just write that the properties of a binomial experiment are met, but then I've got to show whether or not they are. So every lawsuit was dropped or dismissed, or it wasn't, so there are only two outcomes. Um, the probability of being dropped or dismissed is the same for all lawsuits. Um, it's always going to be whatever that proportion truly is out there in the world. Um, the trials are independent, so one lawsuit shouldn't affect the other. And lastly, there is a fixed number of trials. Um, in this case, it's 1,228. So this means that we have, in fact, met the properties of the binomial experiment. Um, the last one is an approximation to a normal distribution can be assumed for the sample proportion. Um, one thing that we do know is that normally in proportion tests, we are going to check n times p, p being the population proportion. Make sure that's bigger than 5. n times q, where q is 1 minus p is greater than also 5. Um, this ensures that we have a big enough sample. The problem is we don't know what p is. That's what we're trying to do is we're trying to estimate p. Um, so we can't use p because we don't know what it is. So we are going to use p hat, the sample proportion, um, and then therefore q hat. This is not ideal. Um, it's not the best way to do this, but it's the best we can do here. So these this assumption is a little weird because we really can't check it for sure. Um, so what we have is we have p hat is equal to this, 
Q hat is equal to that. Um, we calculate P hat again by just taking X over N, X being the number we counted, N being the number we have, and that gives us that ratio. Um, we notice that when we do N times P, we get 856.0, which is greater than 5. And when we do Q, which is 1 minus P, we also get a number bigger than 5. So we can, in fact, use the normal approximation for the sample proportion. So now we get to actually do the calculation. Um, to do the calculation, we do need to have P hat. We actually just calculated P hat. So just as a reminder of what that was, P hat was actually equal to um, 856 over 1,228. And we said that that was approximately equal to 0 0.6971. Um, try to take as many decimal places as you can. All right. Then what we need to have is to do a, a confidence interval. You take your sample value, sample proportion in this case, and you add and subtract some E value. So we have to calculate that E first. Um, e would be what we call a T sub C. Actually, I'm sorry, not T, a Z sub C. So a Z sub C, um, Z standing for the standard normal curve. And then you take that and multiply that by the square root of P hat Q hat over N. This is the standard error of the estimate for um, a proportion. So we have to find out where we know what P hat and Q hat are. Q hat, as a reminder, is just 1 minus P hat. We just did that. And it turns out that that is equal to 0 0.329. I'm sorry, point three, sorry, point three zero two nine. Just apologize for that. Um, and we know what N is. N was 1,228. But we do need to find the Z sub C. Z sub C is actually, um, you can calculate it. It is the area, um, this is a 95% confidence interval, I believe. Nope, sorry, a 99% confidence interval. So we could get that Z sub C by just looking at the normal curve. Here's our mean in the middle that we're working with. And we want this area here to be 0.99. Um, and so you could calculate that based on the activities you did in normal distributions. That's a bit of work. So um, you will find that there's a table that will allow you to do that. Um, so this table actually says that a 99% confidence level, which we call C, means that its critical value Z sub C is 2.575. So we now know that Z sub C is 2.575. So we can put all that information into here. We can calculate our confidence interval. So now it's just a taking out your calculator and multiplying these things together. And we get approximately, when we do that, we get approximately 0 0.3038. And then we can now add and subtract that. I prefer to actually do it as p hat minus e is less than the true P is less than P hat plus E. So you're going to take 0 0.6971, subtract off 0 0.0338, and then you're going to take 0 0.6971 and add 0 0.0338. And when you do that, you get 0 0.6633. And to 0 0.7309. And that's it for actually calculating the confidence interval. Now our last step, last two steps, are the statistical interpretation of this interval and the real world interpretation of this interval. So the statistical interpretation is that this was a 99% confidence interval, so we are 99% confident that the interval is 
0 0.6633 is less than P is less than 0 0.7309 contains the true proportion. Um, so that's your statistical interpretation, and what that really means is that you created this interval. You have no idea if this interval is actually true or not. Um, there's no way to know if you have the correct answer, um, but you're 99% sure that you do have the correct answer, that you have one that actually captured the true proportion. A lot of people do a statistical interpretation the other way around where they say there's a 99% confidence that the true proportion is in the interval, but that implies the true proportion can move around and the interval is fixed. The interval is what moves around, the true proportion is fixed. So this way actually is the correct way to statistically interpret a confidence interval. The real world is where you actually are just telling people what you found. So we actually just found that the proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dismissed is between 0 0.6633 and 0 0.7309. So this is actually what you found of how many are actually dismissed um, is between these. So this is actually the answer to the question at the beginning and it lets everybody know what you found.